Well, hey guys, get excited. I have my sunscreen empties here for you all. Sunscreens that I finished up for the past couple of months. There seem to be a predominance of mineral sunscreens, uh, but there is one chemical sunscreen. Anyway, if you missed my skincare empties video, I'm gonna link it down below along with my hair care empties video. I've been doing a lot of empties lately because I don't know, I've just been using a lot of stuff up. Um, Y'all know I've been going to the pool a lot lately, so probably in the probably towards the end of summer I'm gonna have even more sunscreen empties. But getting into it, this is one that um, I have been really impressed with. It is by MD Solar Science. This is their mineral kids cream. The cast on this is pretty negligible. I mean, it's definitely still there. If you have a deeper skin tone, be aware, it's gonna leave a white cast. Uh, this is water resistant 80 minutes, so it's great for if you're in a humid environment, sweaty conditions. Um, if you are doing sport outside and you wanna use a mineral sunscreen, it's also a really great option around the eyes. A lot of people find that chemical sunscreens burn around the eyes or they start running into your eyes. Using a water resistant mineral sunscreen around the eyes is a great option. And this one is a perfect choice. It's really moisturizing, but it's not greasy. Now it does have that very silicone consistency that you either love or hate. Some people really do not like it. If you don't like it, if you've tried other MD Solar Science sunscreens in the past and you did not care for them, you're not gonna like this one. But if you do like that, like me, it kind of has like a pore blurring effect. It's marketed as being for kids six months of age and older. Uh, you know, when it comes to children, the sunscreen that you put on them, it doesn't have to be mineral necessarily. It's fine to use chemical sunscreens on them. You know, that's a personal choice. Uh, there's nothing wrong with chemical sunscreens. You'll see many chemical sunscreens marketed for kids out there. But when it comes to you know little, little ones, babies, your skin can be more sensitive. And so sometimes people find that mineral sunscreens are less irritating, especially if you have a child with eczema, you may find that they prefer that. Um, it really varies depending on the child. But all that to say, you definitely can use that if you're an adult and you might actually prefer it. Now, speaking of mineral sunscreens that can be used around the eyes for sure, this product is underrated. This coats flawless, Complexion, it's a tinted mineral sunscreen. It's tinted, so it's got iron oxides in it, which can help, in theory, protect you against visible light that comes from the sun and can contribute to hyperpigmentation. This formula is very moisturizing. It's a zinc oxide sunscreen. Now the tint, for me personally, gets rid of any white cast. Uh, it's not orangey or anything like that. Now, if you have a deeper skin tone, you may find that this portends that ashen look as often as often can be the case with a tinted mineral sunscreen on deeper skin tones. But for me, this one works really well and I find it is a great moisturizing product as well. Like I use this alone with no moisturizer underneath it and it really keeps the skin hydrated, glowy. There's a hair stuck to it. This is not water resistant, but it still stays in place really well around the eyelids. So if you're gonna be outside swimming or doing some sort of outdoor sport event activity, I would suggest leaning into a water resistant sunscreen. Here's another tinted mineral sunscreen that is water resistant. Uh, another great option for around the eyes. And this is a Sun Bomb Mineral. This one, you can get at Target. It has that kind of whipped consistency like the MD Solar Science, that sort of silicone-y slippery feel. Um, the tint on this is likewise very nice, like the Coats one. Uh, this one has a bit more of a matte finish to it, but it's not like drying or anything. It's moisturizing. It has that silicone-y sensation, so it is great if you have oily skin. It allows for good evaporation of sweat. It doesn't feel heavy or occlusive. Um, if you wanna see what these look like, by the way, I'm gonna link my video down below reviewing tinted sunscreens because a lot of these I reviewed and I showed me putting them on in that video. So you can check that out there. This one is water resistant, if I didn't already mention that, 40 minutes. So kind of good for in and out days in sweaty conditions. Um, I like the 80 minutes when I'm actually outside doing stuff, but the 40 minutes I like for just living in Houston purposes. Uh, this is humid here. Although it has not been as rainy as it normally is. We did get rain recently, like a few days ago, but uh, yeah, it has been dry. In fact, they're calling for a water conservation, like a drought notice, which seems like an oxymoron here, but yeah. 
All right, here's another one that I've been putting off trying for some time because I was like, whatever. And it is good. It's one not to sleep on. It's the SkinCeuticals SPF 50 Physical Fusion, water resistant, lightweight, fluid. Uh, the tint is kind of similar actually to the Sunbum one, but the consistency is a liquid. So it's got really good spread on the skin, no cast for me. Comparing this to the Color Science Mineral Face Shield, another tinted sunscreen that I have always recommended and really love. This one is even thinner in consistency. I mean, it's very thin, very, you know, spreads very quickly on the skin. So that's how they differ. Um, this one does not do any kind of pilling or anything, not that that one did, but yeah. Um, this one I think would be a great base too for makeup. Um, it has like a, almost a matte finish, but again, not cloying or dry. I've experienced some uh, matte sunscreens that you put them on, it's like a few hour, you know, an hour or so later, it's like they feel tight. Sometimes it, the L to MD UV clear can be that way. Let me know in the comments if you've ever experienced that. Anyways, this one, not that way whatsoever. All right, next up is an actual chemical sunscreen. It is Eustrin's Age Defense Hyaluronic Acid SPF 50. Now this is a moisturizer, it's not water resistant, and it is a chemical sunscreen. It has hyaluronic acid, has some antioxidants in it, which may help further reduce oxidative stress from exposure to environmental stressors like UV and pollution. This one does not leave a cast, but dang, it is very moisturizing in a non-greasy way. It actually leaves the skin very hydrated, kind of giving it a glowy look, similar to um, the Coats one, but a chemical sunscreen. All right, I had to change the battery. Zero white cast. And now this is not, like I said, it's not water resistant. Think of it more of a daily moisturizer with sunscreen in it. It does spread on the skin well, but not as, quickly as the, not as quickly as the UV fusion from SkinCeuticals. It's more of a cream. It's more of, you know, a thick moisturizer. But uh, this, it it is fine around the eyes. Like I don't get any burning or stinging. And I didn't experience it like seeping into my eyes or causing any blurry vision whatsoever, which I have often had that issue with other chemical non-water resistant US sunscreens, which this is, this is, but not the case with this one. I These sunscreens by Eustra and the new ones, the age defense and the oil absorbing, really good. This is also a good base for, a, for cosmetics. You're not gonna get any pilling or anything, uh, but if you do live somewhere where it's really humid and you're spending time outside, you may wanna choose a water resistant formula. I hear a lot of comments as a side note about people like really fearful of hyaluronic acid. Like that seems to be the latest thing that people are suddenly afraid of. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant. It helps to pull water into the stratum corneum when used in topical skincare products. That can have a wrinkle smoothing and plumping effect. And by improving the moisture content of the stratum corneum, ultimately it can help improve the rate of skin cell turnover and natural exfoliation. Now, hyaluronic acid on its own applied to the stratum corneum and just left as is, in theory, especially if you live in a dry climate, it can cause more evaporative water loss out of the skin. It's actually been shown in um, skin equivalent models to do that. But to what extent that actually relates to the real world, I don't think it's ever actually been demonstrated truthfully. It's just kind of a theoretical outcome. Regardless, if you're using a sunscreen or a moisturizer that has hyaluronic acid, it's going to have occlusive ingredients that help trap that moisture into the skin. So that shouldn't be an issue. And so, you know, some people do find that a lot of hyaluronic acid based products do cause irritation for them. I think that's because hyaluronic acid as an ingredient, it can enhance penetration of things and that may lead to more irritation, but it's not inflammatory. I've gotten, gotten those comments before. I mean, it's, it's used in wound, in, in topical wound preparations and in, in medicine, topical hyaluronic acid is actually used. And, you know, of course we inject it in filler. And uh, so it's not, you know, inflammatory or anything like that. Of course, putting it on the skin, it's not really gonna change the hyaluronic acid content of the dermis, but hyaluronic acid is present in the epidermis. I got another comment like it's not, it actually is. Uh, present in your epidermis. It's more abundant in the dermis, but yeah, it is present in the epidermis. And applying it to the skin, it just helps to improve the moisture content of the stratum corneum. Same as any other humectant. Glycerin does the same thing as do, you know, uh, marine extracts. So, but if you are sensitive to hyaluronic acid, then, you know, you might want to avoid this. All right, this product, it's not a broad spectrum sunscreen or anything. It's technically like a makeup, um, but 
man, this I was blown away by. It's the Rodeal Skin Tint SPF 20. This lasted me, um, I used it a little bit longer than six months, although I do suggest sticking within the use by jar there. If you were wondering, these little open jars, they have a, a number and the M, that's the number of months the product is good, good for after you open it. Anyways, um, I used this for quite a while, but I didn't use it as like a standalone sunscreen or anything. I just used it more for makeup purposes over my sunscreen base layer. Uh, and the shade is Hamptons. Again, this is not a broad spectrum sunscreen. It does have SPF 20, so you get some UVB protection and it's obviously tinted, it's a cosmetic product. So you have the iron oxides there, potentially affording some protection against the blue light that comes from the sun, not your devices, the, the sun, uh, to aggravate hyperpigmentation. You may get some protection against that with this. And it's got some peptides, which I really do think help plump up the skin a bit in this product. Um, I love this. It doesn't crease, you know, in the fine lines around the eyes. It really gives the skin a very nice luminous glow. I'm kind of sad that it's empty because this is expensive. I got it on Skin Store and I'm not sure when this video is going up, but Skin Store typically has like a really good sale around holidays, like the 4th of July is coming up. So I'm going to link to Skin Store. Uh, check there. That's where I got it. They have a few other shades too. Um, there's no fragrance in this, by the way. No fragrance in any of these. So that's more of a makeup product. I definitely would not rely on that. As your standalone sunscreen, SPF 20, you're probably not gonna apply enough of it to achieve SPF 20. And it's not broad spectrum, meaning you're not gonna get the UVA protection uh, for, you know, as good UVA protection. Uh, but if you're looking for a makeup product, I, I suggest that, you know, makeup with sunscreen, just putting more sunscreen compounds on you, it's, it's helpful in the long run. Last but not least, we have a favorite of mine by MD Solar Science. I love their tinted lip creams. Um, these are broad spectrum sunscreens that, that are, you know, have a pretty noticeable tint. This is the red shade I finished up. The one thing I hate is like, you, there's definitely product jammed in that little tip that I can't get out. I guess I could get a Q-tip and do, you know, do it like that. That's probably what I should do. Um, love these. They're very hydrating, SPF 30. And so if you, you know, I love the Vanny Cream Mineral Lip Cream, but that leaves a white cast that a lot of people don't like. These do not. These just look like regular tinted lip gloss. And they have a nude, so if you don't want red, they have a few different colors. The colors are nice. Um, they give a nice pop to the face, a nice bright color, and they stay on well and they're not drying. I have, a tr I have trouble finding lip sunscreens that are not drying or irritating, and that's a favorite, the MD Solar Science ones. So definitely check them out if you were in the market for a tinted lip SPF. Very, very good. Stay on well, moisturizing. What else can I say about them? They're very good. Um, you know, I get questions like, is sunscreen safe on the lips? Yeah, you wanna protect your lips from the sun, they're very vulnerable to UV damage. There's not much in the way of a protective barrier there. I think people are worried that they're gonna be ingesting sunscreen chemicals. I mean, unless you're eating tubes and tubes of sunscreen, you're fine. Uh, in small amounts, this is not gonna cause any harm to human health to have it on the lips. It's been tested and used for safely on the lips. The biggest risk with unprotected sun exposure on the lips is squamous cell carcinoma on your lips, which is quite, you know, these skin cancers, they are common, um, especially the lower lip, and correcting those requires, it's a difficult surgery to remove because your lips, you know, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room there. You can imagine closing the defect after they cut the skin cancer out. It can leave you with, you know, mess up the shape of your mouth and that can make eating, drinking very difficult. These are all reasons to protect your lips. Wearing a hat can protect as well, depending on the width of the brim. Face shield, but yeah, if you're gonna be outdoors, don't forget to protect your lips. Comment below and if you've ever gotten a sunburn on the lips. Not pleasant. All right, y'all, those are my sunscreen empties for today. I made, made it through quite a few, but I anticipate that in the fall, which will be here before you know it, when I do my summer empties, I bet I'll have even more because 
like I said, I've been enjoying the pool using the Bondi Sand sunscreen to my body and the Eucerin Mineral Sunscreen is another great body sunscreen. Speaking of body sunscreens, if you're in the market for one, make sure you check out my body SPF video. I'll put that on the end slate so you can watch that. It'll be the card that comes up at the end of the video, you know, where it says subscribe, watch this video. So you can click there and watch the video if you want to. Um, anyways, you guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.